every climber's dream is to summit Everest, but in a different way. Some choose difficult paths, some walk without oxygen, and some even complete their expedition without any guide. As ever, climbers want to become the first person to do something new during their expedition. More than an adventure, it has become a pursuit of ambition and competition, but they all share a common. They climb up and descend Everest on their feet, but a 23-year-old young boy is soon going to even challenge this and become the first climber to descend Mount Everest on his skateboards. Yes, you heard me right. I'm talking about Marco Sifredi, driven by ambition and filled with talent, also got trapped in pursuit of fame and his urge to become the first accomplished led to his downfall. In September 2002, Marco Sifredi, a famous and passionate athlete, decided to go up Everest and by following the traditional route, but to do something different in descending. As he wanted to become the first person to snowboard down Mount Everest. During his descent, things didn't go the way he planned and his descent became one of the biggest mysteries on Mount Everest. Today, I will tell you the story of a man who attempted snowboarding on Mount Everest. Marco Sifredi was born on May 22, 1979 in Chamonix, France. He was a French snowboarder and mountaineer who belonged to the climbing family. His father was a mountain guide and his older brother, Pere, was also a mountaineer who died in an avalanche in their hometown. In the early years of his mountaineering career, Marco Sifredi made numerous descents on snowboard in his hometown valley. After that, he got the confidence to extend his vision to bigger peaks. In 1989, Jean-Marc Boivin became the first to ski down Mont Blanc. After hearing this news, Marco Sifredi got so much inspiration that in June 1996, he made the second ever descent of Mont Blanc on the Aiguille Verte along the Mallory Track. It has a descent of 1,000 meters with a passage of around 50 degrees of incline. Of course, after this expedition, Marco Sifredi immediately took the limelight and became the talk of the town in the mountaineering industry. As at that time, descending from a mountain on a snowboard was considered a very brave move, and I think even now. But it comes with its risks and adventure. Marco Sifredi had numerous mountaineering essence under his belt, like he did in 1998 when he climbed Tokla Raju, which is 6,032 meters peak in Peru, with Philip Forte and Rene Robert. This mountaineering achievement took Marco Sifredi from the starter package to the possession one. In 1999, Marco Sifredi climbed Dorje Lakhva, which is a 6,988 meters peak in Nepal. He not only climbed the peak, but also snowboarded the peak without any support or supplemental oxygen. After all these expeditions, a desire to become the world's first skier to summit the world's highest peak on snowboard came to his mind. So, on May 23, 2001, Sifredi reached the summit of Everest with the help of oxygen and two Sherpas. When he began the descent on his snowboard, after 200 meters, a fastening strap on his snowboard broke due to the cold. After repairing it with the help of a Sherpa and again descending to about 6400 meters in the next two hours, he realized it was becoming too hard to ski down the snow and it was dangerous too. So, he had to continue his descent without snowboarding, which resulted in a failed attempt by Marco. But he didn't lose hope. 
In September 2002, he made his second attempt to climb Mount Everest and descend on a snowboard. This time, he chose a different route to descend. He went to Kathmandu in Nepal from France and made good contact with three Sherpas, Furba, Panuru and Da Tenzing, who helped him in his expedition. On August 10, after an extensive track, Marco Sifredi and his team reached advanced base camp. This time, Sifredi chose the end of the monsoon season. As in monsoon season, the snow accumulation may be high and he would be able to snowboard his entire descent. On August 23rd, he made his first move towards Everest from Camp 1 and he lost the signal for two-way radio. But they were able to manage communication by satellite phones. But Sifridi continued his expedition from Camp 1 to Camp 2 and 3 to the death zone which is 8,000 meters above sea level. Well, that zone is one of the scariest regions on Mount Everest, as this region has precarious landscapes and is, yes, the hardest place for any climber to breathe. Well, way before reaching that zone, Sifridi suffered from a severe headache when he reached just 6,000 meters above sea level. He was not able to eat, sleep, or even put on clothes, but he recovered fast and he was ready for the climb. On August 28, Sifredi proceeded with his journey, reached the North Pole, and set up a tent for an overnight stay. After taking a rest, Marco was ready to snowboard, but an unexpected storm started. Despite bad weather conditions, Sifredi fastened his snowboard bindings and descended alongside the fixed ropes. After the successful surfboarding session on August 31st, Marco and his team reached Camp 2 at 7,500 meters above sea level. On September 2nd, the weather conditions did not improve, but hope was the only option. So Marco didn't stop his ascent to Camp 3. On September 4, weather forecast stated that Everest would encounter a slight snowfall in the upcoming days. On September 8, the weather would be clear. After hearing this forecast, Marco became ready for the summit push. According to him, the hardest part has yet to be done. Don't get carried away. On September 6, Marco left Camp 2 and reached 7,900 meters above sea level, established high camp and shared an update on his expedition status with his friends. On September 7, Marco successfully reached the death zone, also known as Camp 3. At that time, Sifredi had symptoms of altitude sickness and he took three times longer than his first ascent to Everest in 2001. But scaling Everest was just the start of his goal. The main mission was to snowboard via the challenging Hornbeam Colloir. After reaching the summit at around 3 p.m., Marco was prepared to snowboard down. And at the same time, Sherpas warned him about the weather showing distractions. But he was fully ready for his daring surfing adventure. He allowed Sherpas to guide him about rope placements. Sherpas descended from the mountain and started capturing the video of Marco Sifredi surfing at that time. Obviously, they didn't know that they were capturing his last moments. They descended nearly 1,300 meters and saw a figure rising and silently sliding down the mountain. After witnessing this confusing situation, Sherpas reached the point of the sighting, but they were not able to see Sifredi's snowboard tracks, and Sifredi's body mysteriously disappeared. After this, a search and a rescue operation was launched. The difficult weather conditions and precarious terrain made it challenging to locate him. About a month after he disappeared, a memorial was held for Marco at Everest Base Camp. His family, his girlfriend Stephanie, good friends and Sherpas attended the emotional services. The clouds were low, reflecting the somber mood. When the Buddhist priest's chanting ended, the clouds lifted, revealing Marco's tracks on the summit which were still visible over 3,800 meters above them. But, unfortunately, until today, Marco's body has never been found. 
without any clues it's hard to speculate what exactly could have happened with marco there are a lot of theories given by various people about the mysterious disappearance of marco sefredi one theory is that he could have made the transverse across the top of the north face into the canyon where an avalanche could have swept him off the mountain and buried him at the bottom some even believe that he may still be alive somewhere in tibet living like yak herders and climbing unexplored peaks which i personally doubt completely well what do you think what might have exactly happened to marco sefredi let me know in the comment section and thanks for watching